B.G. Derrick, a.k.a. Lil Derrick's real name was Derrick Williams. And not only did he share the streets of Uptown New Orleans with the Williams brothers, he shared their last name in direct bloodline. I talked to Derrick Mama the day before his birthday and she actually just dropped her book. Yeah. And me and her got an understanding with each other about she had really um, misunderstood my take on me when I said me and Derek was riding in a limo and we kept the money for the limo that night. And you know how online people be as they take a story and just run with it. And she really didn't appreciate how that came off. And I actually, you know, I had to ch ch chuckle it up and tell her I'm sorry. And you know, I would do that for any one of my friends, mama, and I hope that they would do the same. And I apologize to her about the way, you know, how you know people took the story and you know flipped that like we stole from Birdman or whatever, but not saying not people not understanding that we as kids we do crazy things. You feel me? And it just wasn't took it like that, you know, for online or it got back to a, a certain type of way and she didn't like. It. And I had to apologize to her before that. I think I, I just apologized to her about about two weeks ago, and we had chopped it up for like an hour and a half. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Right before his birthday, but I didn't know. I didn't know that she felt that type of way. You feel me? And she see a lot of stuff online. Call you, you call her. I called her, cause I talked. You know, I talked to Mighty D for Derek brother. I talked to him every other day too. But um, you know, you got a lot of YouTubers now doing stories on everything. And she saw where somebody went to the scene where Derek got killed that on YouTube. And she was like, he said good, nothing but good things in that interview about him. And then she said the following week, the same person did an interview and was like, Derek tried to rob him and stuff like that. And I, was, and I was like, you know, you know, with online stuff, you know, YouTube now, you know, you just, you don't even have to have the credentials or anything. You just upload anything and people just will run with the story from off the hashtag. BG Derek, you heard me? Real talk, dude, dude. With that really was the bird man to me. You feel me? No disrespect to the big bird man, but that was the bird man right there. I hear a lot of talk about Derek Dad, and, and you know, I, I go on YouTube a lot, and the stories they tell, they need, they need, some people, they should read the books before they, you know, before they get out here and be saying things out their mouth that they don't know what they be saying and stuff, you know. I just know that she explaining how she feel about, you know, growing up, you know, raising her child and missing him and seeing stuff on the internet, you know, that might depict him as a negative person and, you know, coping with his passing after all of these years. And she sees stuff and it triggers her to this day. And she says she just had got to the point where she able to listen to some of his songs. He was a well-known hustler whose real lifestyle mimicked the scene straight out of the Paid and Fool movie, where he's Mitch in the city of New Orleans was literally his stage. They got this baller in a hood who got flocks of that coke. His name Stunner. He heard I be bumping that dope. He told me holler when I sell out, come at him and scope. And if I'm about that, he gon' help me grow. With the same bloodline as the Williams brothers, it was evident that Lil Derrick could hustle, and it was no different when it came to rap. She, when we talked, she was like, she ain't gonna say that Derrick was an angel. She understand like how Derrick grew up and stuff like that, but she still was like, some stuff trigger her, you know, when she see when she sees people talking about her son or when she hears music and shit like that. That's natural, super fun. It's been, yeah. And I, you know, as as me being a person that I am, I can't, I, I, I don't even know how to understand because that's her child, you feel me? And I just wanted to do my part to clear some of that up and, you know, yes, put it yes. in the right perspective because I would want somebody to do the same for my mother too. The only reason I probably think that I was allowed around so much is because I was off of Willow Street. Bees will know me and, you know, and plus Juve, and my uncle Zo hung together, so you know Juve gonna take a liking to me too. And Juve used to cut hair. Turk started cutting hair. Shit, I used to go by Turk. Whenever Rusty, whenever Rusty um couldn't cut my hair, or I didn't have enough of money to get my hair cut by Rusty. I'll go by Turk and pay three dollars, and they actually stay around the corner from each other. You feel me? And Juve cut on the same porch with Rusty, and so uh, you know. How much Rusty was showing? Um, at that time I think. Yeah, probably like 15 and you got to think, and I'm just a young kid, I'm paying $3 and still getting the same haircut. And at that time it was 
for a rapper, you really wanted to have You said the same haircut, so turn the cut. Yeah, turn the cut. Who you think cut better, turn the cut you? Um, Jew, you know, Jew yeah. and Rust and them, they had them mastered the craft, you feel me? So they was, they was, they was cutting hair up into the Hot Boys phone, though? Yeah. It was, it was like a side hustle, though. That was cutting hair up into the Hot Boys phone, to Jew pop. Yeah. Even Soldier Slim cut hair before. A lot of people don't know. Slim was a barber, too. Like, that was the thing for a rapper to do before he became, you know, before he got popping or whatever, you feel me? Up oh, to the point KL came and got him. Oh, yeah. Got him, yeah. Even if uh, even doing some time when Slim was Slim was already popping in rap, he still a cut hair. Just to show, you know, Slim was a stunner too. Like I don't know, it's just something about New Orleans people. Like they always got a stunt. Cause if you'll be doing something to your hair, Slim would be like, man, come sit down, man. Let me show you how to fucking do this. And you know, show off that he still got his barber yeah. skills and shit like that. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Damn, bro. Like man. That's like we all we all do have some way in time where we bump heads and you know still laugh about shit. Fuck Slim done put me out his Cadillac trucks. I think Slim had just got some rims put on his Cadillac truck from home. I think the guy name was Mooney or Markman. They had some rims or something. And Slim got it put on his truck. But Slim had had the truck sitting on Willow with the windows down bumping the sound. And he was bumping his own Nas nice song. And I walked up and I was like, man, why you don't put Jay-Z on? And Slim was like, man, get out of my truck. <laughs> <laughs> I, we ain't playing no Jay-Z in this shit because Slim was a big Nas fan. Yeah. And the dude literally left me on Willow because I wanted to play Jay-Z, you feel me? They was like, man, we ain't listening to all that stunt shit, you, you feel me? Yeah, because Slim was more like a grimy type person. And he, 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 you know, he took the Nas more than he took the Jay-Z. But you know, me being young, I'm looking at Money Ain't A Thing and the commercial song, Big Pimp and shit like that. I'm like, man, I'm a Jay-Z fan. Still was like, man, get out of my truck, man. We ain't playing that shit up here. I think Jay-Z come home too, he's gonna do a lot for me. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. So yeah, boy, boy, boy you know, he got, he, got a lot of, he got a lot on his shoulders as far as people coming on him. And Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he can handle it though. Yeah. He can handle it yeah, yeah. folks. Just be yourself? Yeah. Make it happen. Sure. yeah. Sure. And plus, you know that tour gonna take it up through yeah. there. That tour gonna be lovely, you feel me? That that day alone gonna be so That's lovely. Gonna be crazy. Gonna be crazy in the yeah. <laughs> I'm you, that shit gonna cause some rage for real. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes indeed. So shit, we just out I'm just free. I talked to Turk recently about that too, about the tour and shit and all that. Yeah. You know, he be feeling like he don't get his justice due. But I told him he don't express that. He, you know, a lot of- and I remember, well, hold up, because I, I remember, uh, I ain't gonna just stop keep going, but I remember DG Mama said, she said, yeah, there's always gonna be a tour. It's, the, the tour is official. And I said, you, I said, Turk will be a part of it. She was like, I don't think so. Yeah. You, you, you uh, that's, that's not real. Turk is, if there's a hot boy or you, the Turk is gonna be a hot part of it, right? But Turk is the hot boy, so I'm pretty sure. Like, you know, it, with, with New Orleans, we big on eagles and pride, you feel me? Like, sometimes you gotta tuck that in there, handle the business. Is, this, is, is, is Birdman and Turk not saying how they don't f each other? I don't really know, I can't speak that, I don't really know. Cause I never hear anything online about it, right? Yeah. That they each other, don't f each other. Yeah, that's what she, I don't know. So things are better left. Yeah, yeah you know, I don't know, I don't wanna speak on their relationship, cause they, that's Birdman, his CEO, and that's Turk, he's a hot boy, so. You know, I can't really tell you about their relationship. Yeah. I don't see why he wouldn't be on that though. I don't see neither, you feel me? Yeah. And it's and it's it's never not nothing that they can't hatch out, you feel right. me?